Hi, um, we're here today at 810 Old Post Road in Bedford, New York, and we are about to find out whether we're um, energy efficient or um, um, what would you call us? If we're not? Have some steps to take to improve. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, Janet, where we'd like to start thinking is when we uh, are approaching an existing home is how uh, much more energy efficient can the home become? Because really, if you have a home that is highly energy efficient, your home is really a green home if you do nothing else. And if your home is not energy efficient, but you've put in all sorts of bamboo flooring and other green features, if it's not energy efficient, you're not green. So what we really need to do is to start with looking at the green features of your home. And believe it or not, it's kind of boring, but I like to start in the attic. The best place to start in a home is to think about whether or not it has enough insulation at the attic level. Right. Uh, and even if there is fiberglass bat insulation, that tends to be a fairly poor quality of insulation compared to the very high performance insulations that are available now, uh, say blown in cellulose insulation, which is a very high performance insulation. Now, how about the basement? Can we take a look oh, at the yes. basement? Another exciting oh, very spot. Definitely. The main thing to look for in the basement are, is the spaces around the pipes and the uh, electrical so wires and that kind of thing. Right yes, there. exactly. All these should be filled in. You're actually taking the cool air that's down here and allowing it to circulate other places in the house. So There are both wall switch and ceiling motion detectors that you can have in a home. So for instance, in the exercise room, if you find that people walk out and leave the lights on, right. just have a motion detector on the wall switch. Another thing that, that's available now is um, our down lights that are LED light bulbs, mm -hmm. light emitting diode light bulbs, which is what they've put now in the Empire State Building, for instance. Yeah. They are very expensive. However, they are rated to last about 20 years. So they last a really long time. They're extremely efficient. They use a very, very low amount of electricity and they're a much nicer light than okay. compact fluorescence, and they don't contain mercury, which is the big issue with compact fluorescence. Yeah. You have to dispose of CFLs properly, yeah. LEDs, it's just the same as any other yeah. uh, bulb. Well, the main thing about this stuff is that if you uh, decide you have a desire to replace anything anytime soon, make sure you get Energy Star. Not only are they efficient from an energy use point of view, but you can get them to be very energy efficient from a water use point of view. So there is a, a, a nifty thing that you can put up into the flue called a flue pillow, or you know, other names are like that, and it fits up in there, it inflates with air, <laughs> looks like a pillow, it has a cord hanging down so you don't light a fire or forget that it's there, and it has the benefit of preventing air from moving up or air from moving down. Once you've done everything that you can to make your use as low as possible, then you turn to alternative sources. Depending on how bold you'd like to be, you could be a wonderful candidate here for doing something we call geothermal heating, which is to use the temperature of the constant temperature of the ground and use that to heat your home. And, and it works with your existing system in your house. It's not that you have to suddenly rip out ducts or anything. It, right. Once it gets to, into your house, it's working with the system you have. That's so uh, it's... Gosh, it, it would make me feel very, very green. You would be extremely green. You would be extremely green. So this roof right here looks, to me, to be fabulous. This looks like a wonderful surface for a solar system. It's south facing. It doesn't have any trees near it, so it's not going to have the issue. It's, it's a good sized space. You could get a lot of panels up there. I think you could do, a, you might be able to get some uh, solar PV panels up there as well if you want to try to generate some of your own electricity. Yeah. And uh, solar thermal for heating hot water for the home and for heating for the pool. Fantastic. Looks great to me. One of the other things that worries me when I lay awake at night is the issue of if we get interruptions of fuel supply or we get interruptions from our utilities. And our homes are not tight enough to keep us warm in the middle of winter right. if we get interruptions. Right. If we would make our homes tighter, yep. then we would be able to actually, it might be a little, a little cold, but it wouldn't be like being outside. If, you, if your home was really tight, you could stay in there and be at least out of the elements and be safe yep. until the fuel was resumed again. So I think, though, that in terms of you know existing home, we've covered a lot of you know a lot of areas today, and a lot that that uh, thing of things that you could do in your home. And I think that you could see a reduction in your your heating bills and your air conditioning bills just with the things that we've talked about.